Hello, everyone, and welcome to ITMO, Instant Transformation Moment. This is when we get together to experience spiritual intelligence, which is an instant transformation, because the method we use, the 3Q method, instantly accesses spiritual intelligence. Well, it takes a second or so, which is pretty instant. Now, before we start today on sharing the method, um, I want to just um, talk about the scientific foundations of spiritual intelligence and uh, briefly introduce you to the evidence from science, which uh, gives you the um, foundations of spiritual intelligence in scientific terms. Now, I want to show you a few slides which will help me explain what these scientific foundations are. So you can see here in this diagram, we have four independent fields of scientific research, cognitive psychology, the science of the mind, transpersonal psychology, the science of consciousness, psychoanalysis, the science of identity, and neuroscience, the science of the brain. So these are the four fields of scientific research that will um, that will um, that we draw from to explain the scientific foundations of spiritual intelligence. Now I want to go into each of these branches of science in a little bit of detail. So let me just get the page where we can. Uh, where I can show you this, uh, uh, this evidence. So um, I'm just trying to find it here. Uh, this should be it. Here we are. So this is an article called The Psychology of Spiritual Intelligence. And you'll find this article on the SQ website, sqi.co. And I'm going to read a bit from uh, what this article says. The qualities traditionally ascribed to the soul by religious beliefs are associated with a distinct sense of self at an accessible psychological location with a detectable neurological signature. This combined evidence for spiritual intelligence is drawn from the following four independent fields of scientific research. So firstly, cognitive psychology. Studies in cognitive psychology have established the benefits of mindfulness training with particular reference to anxiety and depression. These studies confirm that the state of presence can be identified neurologically, experienced repeatedly, and verified intersubjectively. Consequently, the distinct sense of self experienced in present, associated with being consciousness itself or the soul, qualifies as a valid subject of scientific investigation. Now, the reason for making this point is that many people might object, well, how can you investigate the soul scientifically? Well, the point being made here is that we define the soul as consciousness itself, and consciousness itself is what's experienced in the state of presence. And this has been explored scientifically by the research in mindfulness. Therefore, the soul is a valid subject of scientific investigation when we define the soul as consciousness itself. So that's the point of the, that's the contribution of cognitive psychology to this model of uh, spiritual intelligence. The next field of science that supports spiritual intelligence is psychoanalysis. So I'm going to read what it says here. 
early studies in psychoanalysis demonstrated that object relations are the means by which personal identity is established. This observation was originally documented a long time ago by ancient traditions of spiritual wisdom, notably by Vedanta and Buddhism. Nevertheless, in the Western intellectual tradition, this finding was first reported by Freud, Sigmund Freud, in his founding work on psychoanalysis at the turn of the 20th century. More recent psychoanalytic studies of object relations confirm that the ego or the body-mind self grows by means of identifying with states of body and mind at the object pole of attention. Now the next area of science that supports uh, the science of spiritual intelligence is transpersonal psychology. Now, as it says here in the article, findings in transpersonal psychology, as confirmed by countless meditators over thousands of years, verify that unmodified consciousness itself, which is free from identification with objects of attention, experiences the qualities traditionally ascribed to the soul. You know, qualities such as peace and compassion and joy and love and so on. The energy of consciousness itself, which is known as spirit, is experienced at the subject pearl of attention in moments of presence, in the form of wisdom, compassion, integrity, joy, love, creativity, and peace. Spirit is the source of spiritual intelligence. And the fourth branch of science, which supports the spiritual intelligence, is neuroscience. And as it says here, neurological studies have established that the experience of presence is associated with hemispheric synchronization and whole brain activation at a frequency of 40 hertz. At this frequency, part brain functions from both hemispheres are integrated into the field of the whole brain, thus combining mind, self, and world into a meaningful whole. 40 hertz whole brain activation therefore correlates neurologically with spiritual intelligence. Neuroscience thus confirms that SQ is hardwired in the human brain. However, spiritual intelligence rarely occurs spontaneously. Therefore, it's necessary to activate spiritual intelligence intentionally in order to experience the benefits of spiritual intelligence in daily life. So in a moment, we're going to actually use the method to activate spiritual intelligence intentionally. It's called the 3Q method. Now, as it says here in the, um, in, in the um, cutout, the cross-pollination of disciplines is the seedbed of true knowledge. So, in other words, when you combine the findings from different areas, different disciplines, this is how you get to understand things in a more profound manner. So I hope this, this brief summary of the scientific evidence has whetted your appetite to learn more about the science of spiritual intelligence. And as it says underneath this illustration in summary, the existence of spiritual intelligence is corroborated by a broad range of scientific findings as briefly outlined just now. The SQ paradigm thus authenticates spirituality in empirical terms. SQ is an advanced dimension of intelligence that everyone can experience directly as an innate capability without relying on religious faith. SQ therefore represents secular spirituality based on the science of the soul. So uh, this point is most important to understand that 
uh, you don't have to believe anything. Uh, spiritual intelligence is a dimension of intelligence that science has confirmed as a true distinct dimension of intelligence based on those four independent fields of scientific research. And we have a method that instantly activates spiritual intelligence. And so we're going to have a look at that method now. And we can all use that method together to experience spiritual intelligence uh, in a moment. So let me just show you another few slides that uh, will help to explain the method. So this uh, symbol here represents three dimensions of intelligence. We have IQ, intellectual intelligence, which is mediated mainly by the left hemisphere. We have EQ, emotional intelligence, mediated mainly by the right hemisphere. And then we have SQ, spiritual intelligence, mediated by the whole brain functioning at the same frequency. Now this symbol opens out into the twin poles of attention. We have the object pole of attention and the subject pole of attention. At the object pole is everything you're aware of, everything that's an object of attention. It's thoughts, emotions, perceptions, memories, beliefs, self-image, all the states of body and mind that are possible are located at the object pole. And at the subject pole is simply awareness itself, consciousness itself, which is aware of objects of attention. So let me just show you a further slide, which will take this a step further. Now this slide here is the same as the last slide with the addition of ter the terms ego and soul. And that's because when you identify with objects of attention, you know, with your body and mind, that's called being the ego. But when you identify with the subject of attention, consciousness itself, that's called being the soul. So this diagram represents the human operating system. And that's because you're either at one pole or the other. You're either at the object pole as the ego, identified with the body and mind, or you're at the subject pole, being the soul, identified with consciousness itself. You're in one of those two states. So this is your operating system. This is the system which determines how you're operating. And as you can see, the, the connection between the ego and the soul is this mechanism of attention. And so the key to shifting from ego to soul and activating spiritual intelligence is a, a matter of going through this mechanism, finding your way through this mechanism of attention, because that's what connects ego and soul. So let's have a look at the fastest, most effective way through this mechanism. And it turns out it's three simple steps. Notice, feel, and be. So when we exercise these three steps in the way that I'm about to describe, you immediately shift from ego to soul, from false self to true self, which activates your spiritual intelligence. So let's have a look then at these three steps so you can understand exactly what you need to do in any moment to experience your spiritual intelligence. So step one is notice. And that simply means to notice the human operating system with the ego and soul at, at opposite poles. Now you might say, well, how do I know that is my operating system? Well, it's very simple. Just observe the fact that whatever arises to your attention, you are the one aware of it, right? 
So whatever arises to your attention, thoughts, emotions, memories, beliefs, perceptions, you name it, you're the one aware of it. So this represents then your operating system with the soul and the ego at opposite poles, your awareness and what you're aware of at opposite poles of attention. So that's step one, you simply notice this fact. And why do we have to notice it? Because, well, because we often forget, don't we? We often get so bound up with our objects of attention, our body and mind, our thoughts and emotions, so bound up with what we're thinking and what our emotions are, that we forget I'm the one aware of my body and mind. I'm the one aware of my thoughts and emotions. And so we have to remind ourselves, that's step one, notice. Step two is feel. Feel what, you, you're gonna ask? Well, it's about feeling the qualities of spiritual intelligence at the subject pole. And to do that, we use a breathing method. Now, this breathing method takes less than a second to actually exercise, but it'll take me more than that to describe it. So let me, st let me describe it now, and you can follow along as I'm describing this breathing method. So bring your attention to your breathing. Just notice at the end of the in-breath, there's a slight pause when you're neither breathing in or breathing out. So just breathe normally, you don't have to exaggerate your breathing. And it's important not to hold your breath at the end of the in-breath. Just allow the breathing to be normal and notice there's a slight pause at the end of the in-breath before you start to breathe out again. Did you find that slight pause at the end of the in-breath? Check it out again. Did you notice? There's just a short pause when you're neither breathing in or breathing out at the end of the in-breath. Now notice that in that pause, what happens to your thinking mind? What happens to the thinking in that pause? Just check it out for yourself. So remember, don't hold your breath when you come to that pause. Just allow that pause to happen briefly and then allow the breath to continue as normal. But notice what happens to your thinking mind in that brief pause each time you come to that pause at the end of the in-breath. Did you notice what happens to the thinking process in that pause? The thinking pauses too, doesn't it? When the breathing pauses, the thinking pauses, right? Check it out for yourself. Just confirm that for yourself. Right? Interesting, isn't it? Now, most people don't, I've never noticed that because most people just, their attention is not finely tuned enough to notice that. But now that you're paying attention to this, you can notice that in that pause, in the breathing, at the end of the in-breath, your thinking pauses. Now it's only a brief pause, right? It's only a brief pause, but it's noticeable, right? Just confirm it for yourself again. Right? So in that brief pause at the end of the in-breath, when the breathing pauses and the thinking pauses, notice how you're feeling. How does it feel in that brief pause?
Did you feel how it feels in that brief pause? Check it out again. How does it feel in that pause in the breathing when the thinking pauses? What's the feeling that goes along with that in that pause? It's a peaceful feeling, isn't it? It's a feeling of calm, a feeling of being undisturbed, right? Just confirm that for yourself. So each time you come to that pause at the end of the in-breath, the thinking pauses and you're feeling peaceful. Right? But you're still conscious, aren't you? Well, yes, you must be. Otherwise, you couldn't have noticed it feels peaceful and you couldn't have noticed that the thinking pauses and you couldn't have noticed that the breathing pauses. So you're still conscious, but you're feeling peaceful and the thinking mind pauses just for a moment. So that's step two of this three-step process, feel. So we've done step one, which is notice. We've done step two, which is feel. Step three is be. And step three follows on from step two. So let's get back to that feeling of peace in, the, in step two, and then we'll move on to step three. So just find that pause again at the end of the in-breath. So each time you come to that pause in the breathing, just feel that peaceful feeling. And as you're feeling that peaceful feeling, move on to step three, be, be that peaceful feeling. And how do you do that? Well, you simply allow that peaceful feeling to go all over your body and mind. So now each time you come to that still point at the end of the in-breath, when the breathing pauses and the thinking pauses and you're feeling that peace, allow that peaceful feeling to go all over your body and mind. And now just take a look around just confirm for yourself that you are now being consciousness itself. You're now being the field of consciousness. And within that field, thoughts and emotions can resume. But you're simply being the consciousness of your thoughts and emotions. You're no longer identified with them. In other words, you've shifted from object pole to subject pole. You've shifted from false self to true self. So, because you're now being the consciousness of your thoughts and emotions, you're no longer identified with your thoughts and emotions. Right? After doing these three steps, notice, feel, and be, you're now the consciousness of whatever arises to your attention. This is called using your spiritual intelligence. And in this position, all the other qualities of spiritual intelligence will spontaneously emerge, not simply peace, but compassion, wisdom, joy, love, integrity, creativity, 
all these qualities and capabilities naturally emerge when you're at the subject pole of attention as the true self using your spiritual intelligence. Now this is, uh, this is a rapid transformation when you do these three steps one after another. We've taken a few minutes to do it together today because describing the steps takes time. But when you do these steps yourself, you can do them in a second or less. And that's why it's called instant transformation. So we gather together every week at the same time, Wednesday at 12 noon GST, to experience our spiritual intelligence together. And we're meeting from all over the world for this experience together. And we're not just doing it for our own sake, we're doing it so we can contribute to global awareness. Now you might say, well, how does that happen? How does, how do we contribute to global awareness by doing this ourselves? Well, very simply, because we're connected to collective consciousness, as Carl Jung explained, and as um, more recent researchers have also explained, there's a collective human consciousness. And when we, um, when we contribute a new experience from ourselves, when we exercise a new capability, when we have an experience of spiritual intelligence individually and as a small group, that's actually, that actually influences collective human consciousness. And when we influence collective human consciousness, every member of the human race can access the change to collective human consciousness that we've introduced. And so we influence collective human consciousness by activating our spiritual intelligence. Now this has been experimentally proved by experiments in group meditations, which have been shown to influence the surrounding area in significant ways, in terms of reducing crime, uh, increasing um, collective action for uh, cohesive uh, behavior, and uh, reducing depression and so on. So we not only have a theory to explain how a small group can contribute to collective consciousness, we also have the experimental proof that it works. So when we meet together every week at this time and experience our spiritual intelligence together, we're actually contributing to collective human consciousness, which then has an influence on events in the world, events in the real world. So, When we meet together every week to experience our spiritual intelligence, we're not just doing it for our own sake, we're doing it to elevate global consciousness. So I hope you'll join us next week at the same time. And, in, and between now and then, please practice spiritual intelligence yourself when you remember to, using these three steps, notice, feel, and be. Practice it during the day. Prove it to yourself, it actually works. And then you'll be able to exercise this ability whenever you want to, and whenever it's useful, especially in moments which are challenging. But even in moments which are not challenging, it's good to exercise this ability to raise your consciousness from ego to soul and experience your spiritual intelligence. Because the more you exercise this ability, the more you build a brain capable of spiritual intelligence, which will then contribute to global consciousness, meaning that 
not only does global consciousness exhibit these qualities more and more, but that more and more people will find it easier and easier to experience spiritual intelligence themselves. So I hope you'll practice this method uh, when you remember to, and join us again next week to experience spiritual intelligence together. So it's goodbye from me now and see you next time.